Do you truly love Rasulullah? Do you have evidences of your love to Rasulullah like Umm Sulaim? At least, do you send salah and salam if you love someone? At least, you send salam. The minimum you can do. The minimum. Do you send salah and salam to Rasulullah every day, like half an hour, hundred times? Do you bother yourself learning the seerah, the life of Rasulullah? Do you have true love in, in your heart to Rasulullah if you want to be with him in Jannah? Her love propelled her, pushed her to, because when the love controls the heart, then what is in the heart comes out to the body. We do it by our hands, our legs move to do what we love, our hands. We speak what we love, we hear what we love, we look at what we love, we be with what we love. If the love in the heart, then it is translated to the jawarih, to, to our uh, members of the, the, the body. Do you have that love? The result of loving Rasulullah Sallallahu Rasulullah told her that she will be in Jannah. This is in the Akhirah. What is the result of loving Rasulullah in this dunya? Let's see this Hadith Qudsi. And Hadith Qudsi, that means it is a Hadith from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, not from Rasulullah, but it is not Quran. So Rasulullah Sallallahu narrated, Inna Allah qala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Man aada li waliyan faqad aadhantuhu bilharb. Whoever become an enemy of one of my awliya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that. If you become an enemy of a wali of the awliya of Allah, a saint, someone that Allah loves, if you become his enemy, what will happen? Allah says, aadhantuhu bilharb. I declare war against him. If you become a love, a beloved one of Allah, a wali of the awliya of Allah, Allah will declare war against your enemies. And if Allah declare war against your enemies, who will win? Allah or the enemies, human beings? So the result of loving Allah and Rasulullah in this dunya, if you, be, if you become a wali of Allah, Allah will declare war against your enemies. وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَطْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ Nothing will make you closer to Allah more than that which Allah make, make obligatory upon you. That means nothing we can make ourselves closer to Allah through more than that things that Allah makes them obligatory upon us. Allah made obligatory, made wajib upon us prayer, fasting, hajj, zakah, and those obligatory worships, those are the things that make us closer to Allah the most. And Allah makes them obligatory because He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, loves them the most. He loves them the most, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why he made them obligatory upon us. Not because if we do them, we will give a favor to Allah. No. Allah loves them the most because they, these things, if we do them, will make us happy or happiest people. We, they will make us happy the most. Allah loves them because the, the, the benefit of these worships is coming back to us. So Allah loves them because they will make our life better. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very generous. Loves them because they will make our life better. Allah telling us how to make Allah loves you. Allah loves you if you do what is good for yourself. If you do what is good for yourself, the best thing, if you do the best thing that will make you the best human being for your own sake, Allah will love you the most. Subhanallah, what a generosity is this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his name, Al-Kareem, the generous subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَطْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ After you do what is wajib to make yourself, to make Allah love you, make yourself closer to Allah, then وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ After you do the obligatory duties, 
then you do nawafil. You make yourself to Allah closer through nawafil. You increase nafilah more and more. Nafilah means the, the, the sunnah, the extra worships that are not obligatory. We have, for example, a wajib prayer and then we have sunnah. You increase a night prayer, qiyamul layl, tahajjud. We have zakah and then we have sadaqa also. We pay extra. Then help others, which is, I mean, do the things that Allah loves, but not obligatory, sunnah or nafilah. You do them more and more and more. You are upgrading more and more until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. As, as I said in the, at the beginning, the example, you want someone to love you, you make yourself closer and closer and closer. You want Allah to love you, you go closer and closer and closer, then Allah loves you. And Allah says, Hatta uhibba. He, make, he or she makes himself or herself closer to me until I love him or her. فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ I become his sense of hearing that he hears with. You hear through Allah. Allah says, I become his sense of hearing. وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ I become his sense of sight that he sees with. وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يَبْطِشُ بِهَا I become his hand by which he grips. وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي بِهَا I become his leg by which he walks. Of course, Allah doesn't become a shape and become your hand. That means Allah guides your hearing, guides your sight, guides your hand, guides your leg. You see, you do, you touch, you walk through the things that Allah loves you to do because Allah loves you. He is guiding everything in you. You go to Allah, you got the love of Allah until Allah loves you. If Allah loves you, He guides everything in you. وَإِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّهُ If He asks me, I shall grant Him. If you ask Allah, Allah will give you. وَلَإِنْ اسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّهُ If He asks my, my shelter, my refuge, if He asks me to protect Him, I shall. لَأُعِيذَنَّ I shall protect him. وَمَا تَرَدَّدْتُ فِي شَيْءٍ أَنَا فَاعِلُهُ I have never hesitated in doing things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that. I have never hesitated in doing things. تَرَدُّدِي فِي نَفْسِ الْمُؤْمِنِ The way I hesitated in taking the soul of a believer. If you are a true believer, a true believer means the one who truly loves Allah and Rasulullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I have never hesitated in doing anything the way I hesitated in taking the soul of a believer. That means at the, at the time of death. Why? يكره الموت وأنا أكره مساءته. This believer, I hesitate to take his soul because he hates death. And I hate to disappoint him. Ya Allah. If you become a believer, Allah hates to disappoint you. Death is coming. The believer hates death, but death is the decree of Allah. It must come. Allah hesitates in his decree, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to take the soul of the believer because we hate death as a believer. I, mean, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us true believers because Allah hates to disappoint the believer. Are you a true believer to be so dear to Allah to that extent? If Allah hates to disappoint you, that means, do you think that Allah will, will send us to hell? But when the love of Allah settles deep in the heart, fills the heart. We don't think anymore about Jannah, about paradise or hell, because in our mind will be Allah, the creator of Jannah, not, not paradise. We don't worship Allah for to get paradise, or we worship Allah because we fear hell. We worship Allah because we love Allah. And that is 
the highest level of the, the relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the true Iman. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all, you and me, true believers to reach that level. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our hearts with the love of Allah and the love of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the love of those who love Allah and Rasulullah. So we will be gathered with them, inshaAllah, in the afterlife.